papaya slice not only look amazing, but they can help with eye strain and enhance your viewing experience. Hey, what's up? This is Reed. Finding the best bias lighting for the most affordable price is difficult. I know because I've spent hours researching and testing out lights that I've bought just to find out which ones are the best. I did a light strip video a little while ago, and in that video, I added some behind my TV. I've been using them ever since, but I've wondered, are they the best ones to go behind the TV? I ended up buying all different kinds of lights to go behind the TV, so you can see a range of different options. I'll start off with the least expensive lights and work my way up. First, let's take a quick look at those lights I installed in my previous video. These are $13, and they're not the longest light strips. They're only long enough to go across the top and the sides of the TV, which my TV is only 55 inches. They do have separators for the corners, which makes it nice on those 90 degree angles. They plug right into the USB port of your TV for power. If you don't have a USB port in your TV, you can just use an extra USB outlet laying around. They use an infrared remote to control it, but they're not smart, so you're limited to the few color options on the remote. There's a couple good things and bad things about these lights. First, the good. They're obviously very inexpensive, and they've worked flawlessly since I've received them, which makes sense since they have really good Amazon reviews. The brightness can also get very dim. Some of the negatives. It can't get very bright, especially since it doesn't cover the bottom of the TV. Also, since the colors are limited to what's on the remote, you're stuck with what they call white, which is more of a light blue. This matters because apparently the ideal bias light color is 6,000 to 6,500 Kelvin white. If you're not sure what the different white Kelvins are, 6,000 is a cool white compared to a lower Kelvin white is more of a warm orangish white. A 6,000 Kelvin white bias light is great because it can enhance the colors and the contrast of what's on the screen. So I found some inexpensive 6,000 Kelvin light strips that are just a few more dollars than the previous ones. These are much longer at 16 feet. They don't have a remote, but instead have some buttons attached that turn it on or off or adjust the brightness. Since they aren't smart, I plugged them into a smart outlet and that's worked great. It stays on the same brightness that you set when you turn it on or off with a smart outlet, so it's perfect for them. The white color on these compared to the last ones is night and day different. These are also way more bright, which is actually one of the downsides to these light strips. They can't get very dim, which is disappointing. Watching some shows with these light strips on and all the other lights off in the house made it almost hard to watch the screen at times. There is a workaround though. You can cut these lights so it could make them shorter and less bright. They also can't change color and are only one shade of white. So if you want to change the colors, you're going to have to go with something else. The next lights are made to go behind the TV and again are slightly more expensive, which I think they're a little over $20. These light strips are nine feet long and they are smart so you can control them from your phone, Alexa, Google Assistant, and if this and that. You can change the color with these, but there isn't a true white. They simulate the white using RGB, but don't have a dedicated white LED light, which you'll find in a more expensive light strip that I'll show you in a bit. They give you an option to adjust the white temperature though, and it's pretty good, but not perfect with a slight blue tint. A few good things about these lights is that they have 90 degree connectors, so they fit well. They cover all sides of the TV, so they're a better option than the first ones I showed. They can also get very dim and bright, so a good range on the brightness. I think for the money, these are a really good option for bias lights behind your TV. Now, if you want a smart LED strip that also has an IR sensor, so it can be controlled by a remote or a Harmony hub, then take a look at these light strips. These Nexlux light strips are the same brand of light strips under my bed if you saw the other light strips video. They are similar to the last light strips where they can change color and the white is simulated by RGB. The brightness range is great. It can get really bright and dim. They work with Alexa, Google Assistant, and If This and That as well. These have to be plugged into an outlet and are 16 feet long so you have plenty of light strip if you need it. You can cut these and add connectors to make a better 90 degree angle for the corner. You might have noticed that these light strips aren't stuck to the back of my TV using their adhesive. Since I had to swap out a lot of light strips for this video, I bought 100 light strip mounting brackets for about $10. These work great and I'll talk more about these and other light strip topics in future videos so make sure to subscribe. If you're a big Harmony Hub user and want inexpensive light strips to turn on with your TV, then these are a good option. What about using a smart bulb for bias lighting? In my old house, my TV was in the corner and had a smart bulb behind the TV, and it actually worked pretty well. I have two hue bulbs and some floor lamps pointed on the wall. It doesn't look that bad, especially since you can get some more accurate white color than some of those less expensive light strips. 
The main issue I have is that there isn't a nice glow around the TV that you get with the LED lights. I tried adjusting the lights to make it better, but I can never get it to be as good as some of those light strips back there. If my TV isn't glowing like an angel, I'm just not satisfied. Of course you can use the Philips Hue light strips behind your TV if you want that nice glow look and stay in the Hue ecosystem. I did hook up the Hue lights to the Hue Sync app to try out the responsive bias lighting. If you aren't familiar with this, it's pretty fun to try and easy to set up if you have Hue lights. You create an entertainment area in the Hue app of where your lights are located. Then I loaded the Hue Sync program on my computer and how it works is that the colors on the computer screen change the color of the lights. So if I'm watching a movie on the computer that's airplaying to the TV, the lights change to match the colors on the TV. Each light can be different colors at the same time, so it matches pretty well. It was great when I didn't notice it and it just enhanced my viewing experience, but if I did notice it, it was pretty distracting for me. There are other options like Dream Screen which costs more money, and I think responsive bias lighting is cool, just not for me. If you use responsive bias lighting, let me know what you're using and any tips you have. Lastly, I wanted to show the LifeX Z light strips behind the TV. These are amazing light strips, but are pretty expensive compared to the other options I've shown. I was curious if all the extra things you get with these lights would make it worth it to use behind the TV over the others. LifeX Z lights get extremely bright and also very, very dim for the best range of brightness I tested out of the bunch. You can also change the colors of individual sections by selecting themes or by drawing on the app, which looks awesome. These have a dedicated white LED light next to the RGB LED lights so you can get a much brighter and more accurate white, which you can change the white temperature to get that exact 6000 Kelvin or make it cooler or warmer depending on your taste. Of course, these light strips are smart and will work with SmartThings, HomeKit, and Harmony Hub. LifeXZs can be extended to be longer, but the starter kit's only about six and a half feet long. It barely covered the top and sides of my TV. However, they are extremely bright, so the starter kit is plenty bright to light up behind your TV, even if it's not that long. So what would I recommend after testing out all of these lights? Well, I may be biased because I love light strips. I would go with one of two options. I think for the price, I would go with the third light strips I showed by Govi. For how inexpensive they are and what you get, they're a really good option, as long as you're fine with the lights not being perfectly white. If you can afford the LifeXZs, then these are hands down the best option. You won't be disappointed with them and they'll integrate with so many other smart home devices. I'm planning on doing more light strip videos in the future, so subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, we'll see you again next time. Next time on Smart Home Solver, if you have light strips behind your TV, but you want more light strips, we have some ideas. Dad.